Introduction Theodore Roosevelt is one of the few presidents whose life, or at least the public image of his life, is even more important historically than his accomplishments as our chief executive officer. This could also be said of Washington, whose image has been a national symbol to millions who know nothing of what he did in his two terms of office, and certainly of Grant, whose military glory, one hopes, outshines the scandals of his administrations, and possibly of Kennedy, who offered a kind of spiritual rebirth to the nation that seems to be something apart from what he accomplished in his thousand days at the White House. Lincoln, of course, is the great example of the leader whose image and performance are of equally mammoth significance, though in his case, the noble image, however like its original, was created largely after his assassination. Alice Roosevelt Longworth, daughter of T.R. by his first marriage, and survivor of all his offspring, remembered the father she loved with an admiration undimmed by sentimentality. When I look back on it now, which I rarely do, I can feel a little mean about my father, especially as a politician rather than as a person. The eyebrows tend to lift and the canines to show. He was certainly right for the period he lived in. Absolutely perfect. It was a time when we needed large families and armies and expansion overseas. It was all in the great imperial tradition. But I tend to see it through the eyes of young people today, and one just can't have a prayerful attitude to it all. It is true. What sounded right and inspiring to the cheering multitudes at the dawn of the twentieth century rings with a slightly tinny resonance today. And what survives in the panorama of history, even more than T.R.'s trust-busting, or his building of the Panama Canal, or his negotiation of the Russo-Japanese War Peace Treaty, is the vision of the asthmatic youth who made a he-man of himself as a rancher in the Wild West, the intrepid rough rider who charged up San Juan Hill, the fearless antagonist of political vice and corruption, and the wielder of the Big Stick, who sent his great white fleet around the globe to impress the alien powers with the spectacle of America's might. There is almost no aspect of his life that is not relevant to some chapter of our history. But to return to Alice Longworth's reservation, the following quotation should adequately demonstrate why much of our contemporary culture is at odds with T.R.'s most treasured views. Here, to begin with, he writes on the respective functions of the sexes. I believe that men and women should stand on an equality of right, but I do not believe that equality of right means equality of function, and I am more and more convinced that the great field, the indispensable field for the usefulness of woman, is the mother of the family. It is her work in the household, in the home, her work in bearing and rearing her children, which is more important than any man's work. And it is that work which should be normally the woman's work, just as normally the man's work should be that of the breadwinner, the supporter of the home, and, if necessary, the soldier who will fight for the home. As a Harvard student, he recorded in his diary, Thank heaven I am at least perfectly pure. Edmund Morris confirms this. During his student years, nor indeed at any time in his life, did Theodore show the slightest tolerance for women, or for that matter, men, who were anything but rigidly virtuous. Sex to him was part of the mystical union of marriage, and, however pleasurable as an act of love, its function was to procreate. Outside marriage, as far as he was concerned, it simply did not exist. Nor did he have anything but anathema for reluctant parents. But the man or woman who deliberately avoids marriage, and has a heart so cold as to know no passion, and a brain so shallow and selfish as to dislike having children, is in effect a criminal against the race, and should be an object of contemptuous abhorrence by all healthy people. As to homosexuality, Alice Longworth, referring to a supposed remark made by Britain's George V, I thought men like that shot themselves, commented, My father was a bit like that.